Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Kim here. And today I have a little um, thrifty haul um, uh, to show you. This was one of the boxes that I had shipped home. And I did have a few uh, personal items and some household items uh, that I took out uh, to spare you. <laughs> I don't need to see everything I bought. <laughs> and um, uh, so I figured I would show you this because one part of it, uh, the jewelry, is going to be uh, for my upcoming um, uh, Techniques Tuesday uh, videos starting uh, next week. So um, this was when we were thrifting in the southeast. And this is the dress, the tunic top of the sari I bought. I thought I had already shown it to you, but I hadn't. Um, I showed you the sleeves that I cut off, <laughs> and I showed you the scarf, which was just that um, uh, blue netting with the gold trim on it. But I had thought I'd shown you the, the 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 dress itself or the tunic itself, but I hadn't. And it's quite decorative. Um, this is the top of it. Like, look at the um, beadwork on here and the the uh, gems in here. Just gorgeous. So I'm going to open this up so you can see the whole top front. Like, look at this. I don't know yet what I'm going to do with this one. It is just amazing. I love how it ends in a point here. So I'm almost thinking that it would be a fun way to make a closure on a journal and then have this wrap around somehow, but I have to think about it. The buttons, the rhinestone buttons are just amazing. Um, it's got a velvet back on here. So I, I don't, I really don't know how I'm going to cut this up yet. And this is all, all these lines that you see here are rows and rows of beads. So this is a very old sari. And this is a kind of a wrapped, uh, like a, sort of a slip stitch roll where they, they uh, you know, do several beads on a string and then uh, bring it back through and then back up again. So it creates that kind of cable look to it. Um, just beautiful. And the rhinestones in here are, are just gorgeous. I see there's one little spot here where they're missing. But I'm not quite sure how to cut this up yet. And I see there's odd spots where there's little stones missing. But that's okay. I can steal from one area to, to uh, fill that in. And yeah, I, I just don't know, like it would, if you could imagine that this could be the closure, this part here, uh, sort of a magnetic type closure, um, it would be gorgeous, but it goes on for a long way. So I don't know quite how I'm going to cut this yet, but we'll come up with something. Um, it's either that or it's going to have to be the whole thing somehow incorporated into a handbag or something. I don't know, uh, but it's beautiful. So that's the top of it. And like I said, I cut the sleeves off and they were this blue netting um, because they just didn't fold up nicely with the cuffs. The cuffs were quite thick and, and it just couldn't, I couldn't make it fold to, to uh, pack it. So, so the sleeves are somewhere, the cuffs you saw, the scarf got packed somewhere else. It was just a schmozzle. I don't know where the sleeves are yet. I haven't found them yet. <laughs> so along the bottom... Of course, they have beautiful trims here as well. This in itself, that just uh, says at least two, maybe four journals out of just out of this bottom part. It's all fabric, fabric with trims. Um, these, this is a pretty amazing uh, piece of trim here. It's all one piece. Um, so this is what I mean. You know, I paid ten ninety nine for the tunic, and and it had pants, but the pants I sent off to the thr uh, the thrift shop. Um, but it had the tunic, the pants, the scarf, uh, and the cuffs of the sleeve. So to pay ten ninety nine, and I think I got a discount, so I probably paid about ten dollars for this thing. The trim alone is is well worth the investment, and and the fact that you get all the fabric and and then this beautiful rhinestone uh, top on top of that. This is where it's at to buy this stuff. You know, I did buy those expensive trims uh, brand new at the, that Bombay fabric store. But 
Oh my goodness! If you ever have a chance to go in there, your your heart, uh, y- you need a heart monitor to make sure you're okay because <laughs> it's just amazing in there, um, and, and just so many beautiful things. Like I said, they could lock me in that store with a sewing machine and cardboard and and all that beautiful fabric and trim, and I would be in my I would be in heaven. I would be in absolute heaven. Um, but yeah, it can get in, to be expensive in that kind of a heaven. <laughs> So something else is at the back of the tunic top is a tie that you tie the, um, you know, it, it's decorative. And it has these two beautiful tassels made with, um, these are just very metal filigree style bead with little beading at the bottom. It looks like it's taken a little bit of wear, but you know, if you um, added these onto a project, they would look just as beautiful. Um, so there again, you know, I, I only paid $10 for this, so it was well worth the investment in all the goods that I get with it. So, so yeah, there's the dress. Finally found it. How I'm going to divvy this up, I don't know. I'll put that out of the way. So this was in Altona, and I paid 70 cents for it. It's, um... A doily it's you know it's kind of yeah I wouldn't use it as a doily but I look at these little squares and I just said yeah that's a cute little pocket a pocket on a tag if you make a nice tag you can trim with it so I will cut it up and use it for pockets and embellishments on other projects so cute for 70 cents well and worth it now, I bought this ribbon. Um, they had a whole bolt of it. I didn't want to buy a ton of it. So I, I think I bought three meters. And I want to say it was 25 cents a meter or 50 cents a meter. I just really liked the pattern. And I noticed in one of um, Hazel's videos that I think she must have bought a burgundy one like this. Because uh, she loves burgundy. Um, or it's very similar. And we got it at the same store. So this will make adorable pockets on a journal. So if I just cut this to about, you know, maybe a four and a half inch piece, stitch it on three sides onto a page or onto, the you know, an inside cover, I can then embellish it with uh, some trims down the side, you know, something decorative across the top. And then also, you know, maybe some dangled beads or something along the bottom. So this can be quite interesting when it's done. Or even a gold mesh uh, overlay on this would be very, very pretty. So it was just a very neutral, fun um, ribbon. I, I would never use it as a ribbon, but I would certainly use it for junk journals for making pockets and stuff. So I'm looking forward to playing with this very soon. So yeah, I think I bought three meters. This was an absolute score. Um, I think they're going to go upstairs and be tea towels in my, my kitchen, but I just thought I would show them to you. I paid 40 cents each. There is a little bit of staining, but that's okay. They are Robin Hood flower sacks. Oh, upside down. Um, 10 kilogram uh, wheatlets, number two. And so I have two of them. They're from their uh, Montreal, Quebec, Multi Foods. Um, just beautiful, beautiful uh, linen. I mean, like I said, there is some staining on here, but you know, when you look at the age of these things, and so it's, there's just one seam. I think I will open it up and turn them into two uh, tea towels because they're just so pretty. Um, so yeah, this is going into my personal stash. <laughs> And I got two of them, so for 80 cents, two, two uh, beautiful pieces. Now, this one's a little bit more faded, but I, or it might be inside out. I'm not sure. Um, but I, again, it's not something I would use for a journal. It's a very soft cotton, which is perfect for uh, drying dishes and uh, displaying in my kitchen, even though it's not even my color. <laughs> now, this one, I showed it this to um, Hazel because, you know, she loves purple. Oh, here's one of those stones. Okay, I'll put that somewhere where I can find it in another lifetime, I guess. Um, but, you know, I, I showed this to her and I said, do you want a piece of this? And she said, uh, no. <laughs> so it, I'm really surprised. I'm really, really surprised. 
It is a uh, runner of sorts. It's not a scarf. And uh, I paid two fifty. Got this in one of the MCC thrift shops. Maybe Winkler. I'm not sure. I think it was Winkler. And um, just a lovely purple. It has that Aztec pattern. But that can easily be dressed up in a journal. Now you're going to be sorry, right, Hazel? Now you're going to be sorry. Um, so I could I could use this as a journal cover like this. In fact, this would make a beautiful journal cover right here. Uh, or maybe two, depending on you know how, how they uh, sit. But that would make a beautiful journal cover just like this. And yes, it's an Aztec pattern, but I could see uh, beading and doing some sequin work all through this uh, to make it not so intense uh, Aztec pattern look. Um, I can cover it with more trims, but I just love this color of purple. Um, so I think it will be something that I will enjoy uh, working with. Um, so yeah, this will go in the pile of stuff. And yeah, you could have had some of this hazel, but you missed out. Look how pretty that is. Why would you let me, well, why would you not take some of this from me? I don't get it. Oh, well, <laughs> more for me to enjoy. When am I going to do all these journals? When? I have no idea. I bought these. I think I got these at Value Village. And they are just a small hole punch. Um, but this is a handy thing if you can find these. Now, do I have a piece of paper that I can show you this? Ah, oh, just let me get a piece of paper here. Or cardstock or something. Yeah, I have cardstock right here. Yes. Now, I'm just doing this on the fly, so it won't be perfect, but I'm going to try to make two holes. Um, which way would it go? This way. And and you can find these. I think they're Fiskars, aren't they? Uh, I'm not sure. But you see, I see them a lot of times. And they have different uh, shapes, too. Not just this little tiny hole, but um, there's one. And there's one. So so it makes a very small, small hole uh, that you can use uh, for your, your um, you know, whatever kind of projects and stuff or making a little dangle off of a, you know, a tab or, or um, you know, something that you might want to dangle a bulb pin from or, uh, you know, some kind of charm or trinket. But the other thing that I really like about this is, I hope you can see those two holes. Oop, sorry, move the camera is if I take a, um, just a second, I have to walk away just for a second here. If I take a ruler and a blade, now this, I hope it's going to be sharp enough to show you this, but if I, if I line this up with the top of the hole on both of them, and I take my blade, and I just do a, cut. I hope I did that good enough. Probably not. You know, when I'm on camera, it's not going to turn out perfect, right? But this will help you in a pinch. Okay, got it. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side and make another little tiny hole or a, a cut uh, from the hole, one hole to the next. course I would do it much straighter <laughs> when you're not watching <laughs> okay it's not perfect but what it does now is it allows me to slide something if I if I glue this down or cut it to a, a size that I want I can use it as a pocket to tuck stuff into and so, so you can do uh, two or three of these in a row on, on um, you know, a piece of paper and then, you know, trim it out how you want it. And then it's, it's just like those Tim Holtz um, things where you can, you can have several pockets. So I hope that makes sense. Now, I, I went from the top down, but you could go inwards too. And you, you could pre-draw uh, your lines so you know exactly what you're doing as far as uh, where you have to trim it out afterwards. And then you'd be able to line up your, your holes. But for the sake of this video, I just wanted to show you quickly how I would do this. And this one's a little bit crooked. I would uh, probably 
um, trim that out just a little bit more. Yeah, that's not so bad. So that's an alternative if you don't have that die cut that cuts this shape. Uh, and then you're not limited to the size of the pocket that is created with the die cut. So so this way you can do any size of, of um, or length of, of a, an, an item that you want to have as a, as a tuck or a hole for um, tucking things in in your journals. I hope that makes sense. Sometimes I, you know, I show you things and I'm not quite sure if I'm, if, you know, if it really works for other people. <laughs> But that's that's what I would use it for, and and I have several sizes. There's also a slot one, um, and a double. I have a double slot, and there's a single slot. There's quite a few different um, designs. So keep your eye out for these. I've I've seen them a few times around now. I think um, what I will do is I when I do see them is I will buy the extra ones and then just keep them to put in you know boxes of stuff uh, for people because. Um, I, I don't think I paid more than a dollar or two for this, um, but it's a very sturdy, well-made uh, punch. Okay, so there's that. Now I want to make pockets. And then um, you did see my other uh, spool that I bought of um, this uh, yarn. It was the eyelash trim, and this is more the uh, boa or vice versa. Is this the eyelash and that's the boa? I, I mix them up. I just call them all flu flu fibers. That's what I call them, flu flus. Um, so yeah, I paid eighty cents for this. Um, and back in the day, remember this stuff used to sell for six seven dollars a, a spool or a, a skein. Um, but yeah, orange is a hard color to find, and so when I do find it, I always grab it. So I was very fortunate to find two different ones this this time around. So I'm thinking some orange tassels are coming out uh, very soon. Love it. I don't know what possessed me to buy these, but I did. And um, I think they were like 30 cents or 40 cents uh, a bundle. And um, they're just gold leaves. Now, this would be really cute mixed in with some of my fabric flowers that I've been making. So it's not not um, it's not the end of the world that I bought them. I, I could certainly use them. But I, I find it a very strange purchase for me, even for me. Why? <laughs> because I can make my own leaves or and I have lots of leaves. But they are interesting. Uh, it's one of those things that, you know, when you sit down and you actually play with something like this and, you know, do some sequins and beading, then you can really, or even adding trims and stuff onto there, you can really make some cute stuff. They are a little bit distressed, so I would have to fix them up a little bit. Or maybe it's one of those things that I take out my heat gun and start playing and, and get rid of this uh, altogether. It looks like it's hot glue that was glued onto this before it was um, cut, which is probably what it is. So I'm sure if I, if I um, strip the leaves right off of the wire and play around, I could probably make some fun... Um, melted leaves with the heat gun. So now that I've shown you this heat gun method, I'm sure you're all, if you don't have a heat gun, you're running out to get one. Do check online. I'm not 100%, but you know, if you're going to go to global, you, you might get 10% off if you use my code. Um, so check there first because their prices are pretty good. And if not, you know, you can find them on, on a lot of your different, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, scrapbook stuff places. Um, you can find them at Michael's. You will pay a little bit more at Michael's, uh, but there you could use your 40% off coupon if you have one. Um, so, so it might work out in the end for you to have it local and to get it quickly. Uh, but I know that they are a little bit higher priced over there. Um, uh, but yeah, so that's what I, I bought these and I think I'll just stick them in the, the, uh, jar with, uh, the big flowers to remind myself to use them one day, um, uh, with them, Let's see what I can come up with. I'll bring you along if I do work on anything. So I got this box for 60 cents and it sort of matches the one I already had on my desk that I think I paid a um, dollar for somewhere. Uh, but it's a bigger box. This one has 100 in it. This one I think has, oh, it looks like it has 200 in here. What is it, you ask? Well, it's little brass fasteners. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's more than 200 in here because it looks like there's different sizes. 
Now these are the shinier new ones um, with the flat uh, top. And this has got the rounded dome top. But these are nice for putting together, you know, uh, pieces of ephemera and just making a little hole using that little hole punch and um, uh, putting a bunch together. But it looks like there's different sizes in here. Or maybe it was just... Um, maybe I'm wrong. But these ones are nice. They're, they've got that nice point on them um, and they have the nice uh, antique color. So I will enjoy using these in, in projects. Not that I don't have these. I have them, but I for, for the price that I'm paying for 60 cents, of course I'm going to buy them because they can always go in uh, boxes that I put together. Which, by the way, I am working on five new boxes to uh, sell in my shop. Um, they will be ready uh, probably in the next week or two. Only because I do it in stages. When I walk by, I put things in. And, um, you know, they sell for, for $50 plus the $9 shipping. They went very, very quickly last time, and I don't make a lot of money off of them. I'm really just clearing out stuff that, you know, to keep the stuff moving, and, uh, you know, then I can I can buy more again. So I'm not making a huge profit. I probably make about $20 on, on each box um, as far as my profit. Uh, so so when, when I'm putting these boxes together, you're getting a lot of stuff in there. And if you had to go and buy this on this stuff on Etsy and all these other places, you would find that it's way, way uh, well worth uh, the price of $50. However, saying that, um, this will probably be the last time that I can sell them at $50 because uh, I did get notification from Canada Post because I'm a business member. Uh, that some prices are going up. And I imagine that includes shipping to United States and across Canada. I don't know if the shipping boxes in Canada have gone up in price or, or if they are, that's part of the uh, price cha changing. But for sure, shipping um, big boxes that weigh more than five kilograms uh, are going to uh, take a hit. So I'm guessing that I will have to probably in the future put the price up to $60. So I will only have five boxes available when they're done. And so so you'll have to keep an eye out for them and grab them uh, quickly because they went in, in a couple of days uh, last time. So yeah, do stay tuned for that. So things like this will end up in those boxes. So the next thing to show you is, um, <laughs> I bought this thing. It um, It's one of these pocket holder things that go on the wall or on a rod. So you could put this in your, I think you can put it in your, your uh, hang it in your closet maybe. Uh, yeah, so the rod fits here. Maybe it goes over, you could use it over the door. I don't know. I just thought, um, I don't know what I thought. <laughs> I <laughs> really don't know what I thought, but I just liked all the little pockets. So it could hold um, die cuts, uh, you know, where I, I would just put a few in, in each pocket. There's a lot of pockets on here. So there's like one, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. Whew, I did it. Um, so 30 pockets on here and they're, they're reasonable size. So you could you could put dyes or or papers or something. I don't know if I actually use it for that, but you know that's quite a bit of stuff that I just have clipped here together uh, that would fit in here. I don't know if I've got a spot for it or not in my studio. I paid a dollar twenty five. I noticed that there was oh here there's one little pocket that's coming apart. So I think what I would do is just run my sewing machine down one more time, maybe do a zigzag and a funky color. On, on both sides to just secure it a, a little bit better and maybe down down the, the seams that they have down the center. That ought to hold everything together, but I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I paid $1.25. Um, it, it's just fun. I just don't have a lot of wall space left in my studio. So maybe on the side of a cupboard if I can make, make that work or maybe beside my sewing machine. It's yeah, uh, you know, still undecided, but for a dollar twenty-five, I thought, well, I can have some fun figuring it out. It's shaped like a dress shape, so so uh, you know, like a dress form. So it it would certainly fit in the studio. So whatever I decide to put in it is still a mystery. It will just go in the pile. Maybe it'll end up in a box someday. <laughs> And then in our thrifting uh, process, uh, Thelma gifted me these uh, goodies. Um, 
you know, sometimes she's walking around and she finds things and then uh, all of a sudden she just hands them to you out of the blue. So she did find me um, this beautiful little owl pendant. Um, oh, she didn't even take the price off. She paid a dollar for it. <laughs> Thank you, Thelma. It's got the feathers and it does have the bottom of the, the um, owl here. Uh, just really sweet. I have uh, a, a big project that I haven't uh, started. I'm still gathering, haven't started yet, and it will be on, um, I'm, I'm calling it, you know, something to do with uh, um, the, being the prey or the, the predator. You know, um, it's, it's, it will be kind of a woodlands thing, but, but a little bit more serious, not whimsical, a little bit more... Um, um, natural, I, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's still in the works. Uh, I don't know for sure if this will make it for that one, but I do love, uh, the idea of working on some woodlands journals. So, you know, it's a possibility for in the future. And then she, uh, couldn't resist. She found that, but then she was concerned how I was going to carry it around. And so she went, and found me for 25 cents. She found a little gift card, which is so sweet. It, it really is cute. It says just for you. And it's such a pretty, pretty uh, floral thing here. I could see using this card uh, somewhere and just putting a label on it. But I think I'll just put the owl back in here and, and uh, keep these together as a reminder of my, my thrifty gift from Thelma. She, she loves to do that. When she's walking around and looking at things, she will just uh, pick it up and buy it, and not tell you and not let you see. Um, but I, I got something for her too. And, and she thinks she's the only one that's good at that. Um, but she is, she's very good at it and, and always has little gifties for us. But I, I found something for her that I have to work on in the, in the very near fu future. So hopefully I will have it done. Thelma and Barb are both coming to New Brunswick in May. Um, there is still space if somebody does want to join them, um, you know, f for the week. It will be a very hectic week with Thelma and Barb. Um, and then Thelma staying on for another week afterwards. But... Um, we have a fabric sale that we're going to, and I'm really hopeful that we're going to meet up with Jennifer and uh, uh, Deborah um, to have a, a fun uh, day or a couple of days, I'm hoping, um, because uh, we we met them at the fabric sale last year, Thelma and I, and had just a blast. And both Jennifer and Deborah have their own channels, and they're here in New Brunswick, so hopefully we can all go to the fabric sale together. And, and um, yeah, so if anybody else is thinking about joining us, uh, do let me know because, uh, you know, I have to make plans and, and make everything fit and work for everybody. So I would like to know ahead of time if somebody else wants to join us, you know, just saying... Hazel and Caroline and all the others. I know Caroline said she uh, wouldn't make it this year, but uh, and Hazel was still sort of on the fence, but we'll see what happens. And uh, then there's still Val. I don't know, Val, are you thinking about it still? A uh, few others. Any of Anybody else that is interested, just let me know. But I do have to make plans and, you know, kind of uh, work it all together as far as the sleeping arrangements and all that. But, you know, there's plenty of room, plenty of crafting materials. All you would need is your favorite tools that if you want to bring it with you. But for the most part, I have everything. Glue. You might want to bring your art glitter glue. Anyway, I saved the best for last because that's what I like to do. So do let me know if anybody wants to come. It's this bag. And no, I'm not even going to open it today. I'm just going to let you sort of sneak peek at it. It is heavy. It probably weighs... Mm, at least three pounds, four pounds, maybe more. I, I'll have to get my scale up, but I'll do that on on uh, Tuesday. So yeah, there's all kinds of goodness in here. Now what happened is on our way to take Hazel to the airport on her last day, um, I said to her, you know what? There's an antique sale and my friend Jimmy is going to be there and I'd like to see Jimmy because I don't know if I'll be able to see him at all during the week. Turns out I was able to. Hi, Jimmy. 
And um, so I said, it's my last chance to see him at the same time. So if you guys want to go to this antique sale, it opens this morning at 10 o'clock. And we didn't have to have Hazel to the airport till 1230. And I I knew she already ate breakfast. We all already ate breakfast. So, I, you know, the general consensus was like, yeah, let's go. And so we went and it was crowded as all get out. And, and, uh, really there was, uh, a barely walking room. Uh, you know, you were touching elbows with everybody and anybody. And so at first we were all together and then we kind of went our own different ways to, to do our own pace. Um, and I came across this bag of jewelry and a bunch of other stuff, which is in another, um, another, uh, section somewhere. And, um, so when I got up, uh, met up with the girls again, they said, Oh, what did you find? And I said, a bag of jewelry for $15. And so they were like, where, where? And I said, well, over there. And there's only two bags left. So they each bought a bag of these, <laughs> but it's heavy. I would have bought all three bags myself, um, because they were all very interesting. I think, um, Hazel had a really interesting one. Um, but I would have bought all three myself, but there's no way I could have mailed these to myself or, or, um, shipped them in, in a suitcase. I just couldn't do it. Um, but this was, um, such a fun find. Uh, I haven't gone through it. I just kind of peeked into it a little bit, but I'm looking forward to exploring it with you. And what's going to happen on Tuesday, this will be the first, uh, uh, week of our techniques Tuesday. So I won't be making anything that day, but I will show you my process of how I I decide what gets to be what. And so everything will get separated into different trays. I will explain to you how I'm going to use it. And then um, each week I will have one of those trays because the trays all have lids. It, they're like uh, little takeout food containers. So they all have lids. They will be labeled. And each week I will take one out and we will work on it until it's gone so that you can see my process. Because even though I get a bag of jewelry like this, I have a lot of jewelry. And so I have to start making this stuff go away in one way, shape or another. So that will be my process on Tuesday is to share with you how I open this bag and sort it and what it becomes and uh, how, how we work with it in the future. So that's all you get to see is this. And I just love it. I'm excited because there's lots of fun things in here. I know you can't see as clearly as I can, but it is just, you know, you want to look in there like, look, there's a peace sign there. And there's something that looks like a girl's dress there. And there's a little uh, soccer ball for people who love soccer. Um, just fun, fun stuff. Some purple things. Um, yeah, lots of fun goodies, pearls, uh, looks like a, a button of some kind here or a pendant maybe. Anyway, that's it. So that's it for my, my video for today. It is Sunday. I'm actually away today. Um, but, but, uh, you're seeing this now. Um, so, so, um, tomorrow is Monday. I will be, um, doing my global land, uh, product review for the stencils. I'm pretty excited. This is my last one for them. Uh, I, you know, we haven't worked out if I'm going to continue yet or not. I will wait and see what happens. But if not, I will come up with something else to do on Mondays because, you know, there's always opportunities to, to show you things either way. Um, but, but I do have, uh, some, we do have some renovations coming up, um, uh, that I have to take care of. One of them is in my sewing area in, in my studio here. They're putting in a new electrical panel. And uh, so I do have to do some shifting in my studio to make that work. And then, uh, the other thing is, is that it is tax season at the end of the month. I got to get my paperwork in order. I'm always uh, behind the eight ball. You ask my friends, they laugh about it because they know every, every month or every year, April, Kim is done. She's got to do paperwork because <laughs> I, I am the the one who notoriously puts everything into the shoe box for the whole year. Luckily this time I, I did use folders where I separated it by month. Usually it's all in one, one box. And then I deal with it at, at the end of the year. I don't know why I'm much more organized than that. And it's pathetic, but it's something I've just always struggled with is paperwork. Anyway, so that's part of, uh, so there will be some hit and miss videos, but for sure, uh, Monday is a go Tuesday is our, um, 
uh, Techniques Tuesday. I don't know yet for Wednesday. It'll depend on what, how the mail works out, if I have happy mail. Um, and then Thursday will be another uh, thrift video. And I have lots backed up, so there's no shortage of thrift videos. So you might end up getting a couple a week from now until I'm caught up. Anyway, that's it for today. I wish you all a very creative day and a creative week. And I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Bye for now.